Whoa. You like this? I look like Casper. <laughs> <laughs> I was out of breath. Folks, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back, friends, family, and... Reading Associates! Woo! It's, it's intimate reading associates. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. Today, if you could not tell by the title and the thumbnail, we're doing a book swap. We're mm. back. We're back, baby. We are doing a traditional book swap. Mm -hmm. For those of you who've been around since the beginning of this whole book journey with both of us, Ashlyn, back in March, filmed an incredible video. So go to her channel, check that out. It is swapping books with her husband for a week. That is me. This is my wife. I am her husband. It's what we do. In that video, what makes it traditional is that we've already done another book swap, but in the first video, um, we swapped two books from our shelves with each other, and then we went out to Barnes & Noble and bought each other a surprise book. So that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna go the little old barns and then Ashley and I will be back and we will swap the books and we will begin this vlog so I'm so excited let's go on a journey show in the world do I get Ashley hmm This is so short. Look who I found. <laughs> Ashley keeps stalking me. <laughs> Taking all my ideas. I know it's weird. <laughs> Okay, I got a few options. First book is The Storied Life of A.J. Figury by Gabrielle Zevin. Sounds right up her alley. Just general fiction. Then we have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is like a post-apocalyptic, but not scary. So it's more thought-provoking, more, more profound. Seems something she'd be into. And the other two are fantasy. I tried to find standalones, not anything that'd be part of the series. First one is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I've heard crazy things about this book and it's quickly becoming a, a piece of modern classical fantasy so I think this might be something she'd be interested in but then lastly Secret Life of Adela Rue by B.E. Schwab I think she's been looking at this book for over a year so I think I don't know I'm torn I'm really torn between all four of these <sighs> looks like I'm gonna have to flip a coin We are back. We went to Barnes & Noble. We just shopped for each other. If you want to yeah. see what I gave Ashton to read, you have to go on over to her channel. Her video is down in the description. It's gonna be beautiful. You guys need to get excited for it because, oh my goodness. He gave me some really good books and they have variety. It's gonna be a roller coaster. It really is. I'm excited to see your reaction. At least I know that the two that I have read of those three uh, are heavy hitters to me. Get ready. <laughs> You're gonna find your new fix, that's for sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I so excited to show you what I have for you. Please, show me now. Do you have a preference of what you want to see first? Um, give me what you got from your shelves and then give me the surprise book. Give me, give me, give me. Okay. That sounded thick. <laughs> yeah, What's it actually that? is a little. Okay, do you have a guess? This feels like Crooked Kingdom. This is the Hazel Oh, the Hazel <laughs> Melissa Albert. Ooh, you're finally getting me to read this. I'm, it's perfect for October. I know you're gonna be reading this in like November. The Hazelwood. This book has a lot of flack, 
there's not a lot of great reviews out there on the Pretty internet. Nice. Um, I will die on this hill. <laughs> I really liked this book. It felt so grim, but it's young adult. Okay. This is one of the first books that I read getting back into reading. Honestly, hooked me from the beginning. I don't know if I love it so much because of the nostalgia factor yeah. or because I genuinely liked it a lot. I remember you talking to me about it last year of how yeah. kind of twisted this thing gets. This book <laughs> is honestly so dark, but it's great. There's mystery, fantasy, it's just hmm. really such a wild ride. And I think why some people don't like it is because there's really not that much romance. There's like none, but I loved it so much. I loved how dark and creepy it was. Um, I hope you like it. I feel like there's not a lot of people that like it and I just love it so much. Who's say I might be part of that <sighs> fan base. No, you might. You might appreciate it for what it is. A best book of the year. Yeah. So it won, it won, like. I love how it says not the best book of the year, but says a best book. <laughs> it's like you're this, this close. <laughs> Do you have an idea? No. So I finished this one last night. It's The House Across the Lake oh. by Riley Sager. This book! This <laughs> This book is crazy! Oh my gosh. This book feels borderline horror. Really? And you enjoy yes. it? Yes. Um, it was a little much for me. Okay. I think you will love it. Especially sure. because you like horror. But Yeah, I'm really getting into that whole vibe. Yeah, I'm happy for you. <laughs> Better than me. I am so excited to get your so thoughts. This is a thrill ride, huh? I need to talk to someone about this. This is a ride. There's something that happens that just I still have a process. <laughs> That's like the only thriller that I've actually read that genuinely scared the crap out of me. Do you wanna see what? Give me! I took my time. Like I spent so much time trying to find you the perfect book. Oh. This was a journey. I had a plan. I had an agenda, a strategy. <laughs> All of it went out the window when I saw this. Okay. Okay. It's called The Gutter Prayer. And it's a part of the Black Iron Legacy. I think it's a trilogy. Ooh. And yeah, it's Orbit. Orbit. Make a good product, they do. My understanding of this book, it's epic fantasy. And it's kind of about this eternal city. And okay. there's like this war that's raging. And so there are these three thieves that kind of band together. And it just sounds so good. And I think it might be urban as well. So. Ooh, sweet. Yeah, I just, it sounds really good. I've never seen this anywhere. Wow. Wow. You've got what a challenge this is going to be. Right. Well, folks, stick around. Book swaps are always so fun to do. And again, please go check out Ashlyn's version of this. Go see what I gave her. Go see what she thinks of those books. And we will see you. Well, I'll see you shortly. <laughs> Cue them up. People, we're going to start this challenge. We're going to start the reading swap off with Ashlyn's old time friend, the Hazelwood. So we have 17 year old Alice. Prosper Pine. Interesting. Uh, 17 year old Alice Prosper Pine and her mother have spent most of Alice's life on the road, always one step ahead of the uncanny bad luck biting at their heels. But when Alice's grandmother, the reclusive author of a book of pitch dark fairy tales, dies alone on her estate, the Hazelwood, Alice discovers how bad her luck can really get. Her mother is stolen away by a figure who claims to come from that cruel supernatural world where her grandmother's stories are set. Interesting. Alice's only lead is the message her mother left behind, stay away from the Hazelwood. Alice has long steered clear of her grandmother's cultish fans, but now she has no choice but to ally with her classmate and fairy tale superfan, Ellery Finch, who may, who may have his own reasons for wanting to help her to rescue her mother. Alice must venture first to the Hazelwood and then into the world where her grandmother's tales began and where she might discover why her own story went so wrong. This is like a, this is gonna be like a twisted version of Narnia. So let's begin. It's really, Exactly. Hello, everybody. All right, folks. It is like almost 9.30 on a Monday evening and I have to go to work tomorrow morning. I'm gonna get as much of this taken care of as I can.
All right, folks, uh, I read a little bit already. There's a lot of setup going on. There's a lot of creepy details. I, I'm, Ashlyn, is this a YA? Yeah. This doesn't feel like a YA. Holy totally doesn't. There's, a, first of all, there's language. Yes. Language that only adults should be using or here. There's some creepy stuff that just doesn't seem to fit in with the, why is this lumped into the YA section? If it is YA, like truly, truly YA, there's like a YA horror. It's uh, it's definitely Halloween vibes, definitely. But I'm gonna keep reading and then I'll update you guys probably tomorrow. See you later. People, YouTube family, I have, how much do I have left? 43. Okay, I'm behind. I have not even finished my first book and Ashlyn has moved on to her second. Now I know reading is not a race, but when it comes to book swaps and time schedules and, and when you want to get this video up and when you want to start other videos and doing YouTube and doing work, it kind of becomes more of a race against time. So <clears throat> it is 5.17 in the evening. What do you say? Can we get this done in like four hours? What is that, 60 pages an hour? We, we're gonna see, we're gonna see about that. What I envision uh, is gonna help me stay motivated is we are going to set a timer. Treat this like a little mini, like a, like a reading sprint. So where we go from there, I will update you as I go along. Let's begin, shall we? Alrighty, folks, I've stopped it, but I was able to read like 90 pages, and I think I have 90 left, something like that. I am shocked by how some parts of this book are so over the top. Oh my goodness. Main character right now is looking for her mom. She's been abducted. She has to dig into the past of her grandmother and into her grandmother's stories because she was a famous author. And these stories are so over the top. They're like horror, bloody, violent, dark. There's no lesson. There's no hope. There's no goodness in them. Uh, they've been described as, as if she was like a war reporter who just recounted what she witnessed, recounted what she saw. It's not as if she, she just plucked these out of her imagination. It's not as if she created these stories. It's as if these things have, have already been and she just recounted them for us like a historian. And so right now Alice is having to go to the one place that she was told her whole life, do not go, avoid this place. Never go back to the Hazelwood, which is her grandmother's estate. Of course, that's exactly where she has to go because everything in this book has to do with everything in this book, if that makes sense. There, <laughs> there is some very shady, sketchy stuff going on. So let's plow through it. We will get it done tonight, I swear. We got an hour left. I'm at a loss for words. Dude, some of this doesn't even make any sense. for its own good. Well, isn't that sweet? What's going on? It is the next morning. Um, I don't want to go 
too much into detail with my thoughts and opinions on the Hazelwood. I kind of want to save that for when I, when I when I share that with Ashlyn. I don't want to, to give a rating. I don't want to give a review yet. So this was delightful. This was spellbinding. It was fun. Uh, I'm still very surprised, very shocked that my wife is into something like this. Um, I did move on to the second novel, The Gutter Prayer by Gareth Hanrahan. 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 That's pretty cool. So I am 53 pages in, like four chapters in. Um, so I, I read the prologue last night, which was, I'm not gonna lie, it was very confusing. I, I couldn't tell if it was from, if, if the prologue was being told from the perspective of a character or if the prologue was being told from the perspective of a building. It seemed to me that it was being told from the perspective of a building that's burning down. I've never read anything quite like that. I, it's just, it's so imaginative. I was really confused. And to be honest, right now with the story, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a, there's a lot of, there's like three main characters that we've been introduced to, but there's also a bunch of side characters that kind of keep popping in and out. And so it is a little hard to keep up with, but I'm really enjoying what's going on right now. To give you some context, enter a city of saints and thieves. The city of Gurdon stands eternal, a refuge from the war that rages beyond its borders. But in the ancient tunnels deep beneath its streets, a malevolent power has begun to stir. The fate of the city rests in the hands of three thieves. They alone stand against the coming darkness. As conspiracies unfold and secrets are revealed, their friendship will be tested to the limit. If they fail, all will be lost and the streets of Gurdon will run with blood from a remarkable new voice in fantasy. That, I will, I agree with that uh, already. Uh, his voice, the way that Gareth writes, the way the prose is set, I don't know, it's just, it's already very beautiful. YouTube folks. Okay, The Gutter Prayer. Been listening to it on and off. It's really good. This is some of the, I, I've never seen, I don't know, okay. Let's, let's organize our thoughts here, Ian. I haven't read creative world building like this in a long time. And I, I haven't really read anything like this. <laughs> it has the complexity in the world building of say, Steven Erickson's Malazan Book of the Fallen if it was written by Joe Abercrombie. The, the characters are interesting, the world is interesting. Uh, there is a monster on the loose, I don't know where it came from, but it eats people and takes takes their form, okay? And it is hunting down one of the main characters, but I am gonna keep going here for a little bit. I'll catch back up with you in a bit. <laughs> Gutter prayer. I'm like almost 70% of the way done, I think. Where to even go with explaining what this book is about? There's magic, there's guns, there's violence. It's all so great. I know I haven't been filming a lot of montage. I've just been really trying to focus on this book. And and when I try to film and read at the same time, a lot of the times my, my brain is split between let's focus on what's going on and let's focus on getting a good shot. Whereas this, I really have to pay attention. So I will see you very soon. All right, peeps, uh, I just got home from work. We are moving on to the third and final book and I need to take a shower real quick because I am disgusting. So let's, all right, I think it's time to uh, introduce you to what we're reading next. That's right, everybody. Those of you who've been, who've been saying, Ian, you need to get into Riley Sager. You need to read Riley Sager. Well, guess what? We're getting into it. Funny thing is I've already read three, I guess, I guess technically like the pre-prologue, the prologue and the first chapter. And I put it down because of what's going on. I thought, no, I need to film this. You guys need to see every single little reaction to this because <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> what? Okay, so Casey Fletcher, a recently widowed actress trying to escape a streak of bad press, has retreated to the peace and quiet of her family's lake house in Vermont. Armed with a pair of binoculars and several bottles of bourbon, she passes the time watching Tom and Catherine Royce, the glamorous couple living in the house across the lake. They make for good viewing. A tech innovator, Tom is powerful, and a former model, Catherine is gorgeous. One day on the lake, Casey saves Catherine from drowning, and the two strike up a bu budding friendship, but the more they get to know each other, and the longer Casey watches, it becomes clear that Catherine and Tom's marriage isn't as perfect as it appears. When Catherine suddenly vanishes, Casey immediately suspects Tom of foul play. What she doesn't realize is that there's more to the story than meets the eye, and that shocking secrets can lurk beneath the most placid of surfaces. All right, people. 
It has been a few days since I updated you. I have no idea what to even think about this book. House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I have a few theories and a few hunches. So these, these weirdos that moved across the lake, the Royces, from the get-go they're sketchy. Just absolutely sketchy. And then when you get to know them, when they start explaining some things, or when, when the wife starts explaining things to Casey and starts saying, oh, before we moved here, we were just kind of hopping between vacation homes and renting or Airbnb or whatever they were. I don't know what rich people do. But they were looking at different lakes and they were going around. It's come to light that some of the lakes that they've been staying at, people have either been drowned, like died drowning, or they have drowned and gone missing. People haven't found the bodies. And it just so happens that that's how Casey's husband died. And I'm starting to think that maybe the Royces, the people across the way, are somehow connected to this shady business because they don't seem quite so. So the scenes of strangeness and tension that Casey sees in their house while spying on them with binoculars, not illegal at all. I mean, the wife punched her husband in the face. Like she hit him like a man would hit another man. I don't know. I think they're responsible for people drowning. And yeah, and I don't know where this freaking handyman neighbor boy is coming from, but... Ugh. Get excited for Ashton's video because she is reading the third and final book that I gave her to read from my shelf. And oh boy, is it a doozy? It's a freaking doozy. I can't put it down. Let's get back to Half Across the Line. Folks, <laughs> boy was I, I'm not gonna say I was 100% correct. I'm not gonna say I was wrong though either. For those of you who have read the book, you know, well, you know what you know. And I now know it too. Somebody was up to no good. It's come to light to the main character that a police investigation has been going on and it has been in connection to those young women that were declared missing. If you've not read this book, there are sections that say now and there are sections that say before. Uh, the before chapters kind of give you, give you a lot of context to what's happening in the now. And holy crap, this is... his wife. You're telling me the supernatural stuff? Wait, wait. That's a weird twist. I like it, but it's weird. <laughs> This is just getting too unnatural. Focus, okay. Folks, I have a little bit left. I got to a point where I thought there's no way I can, I can get away with not filming reading the last 40 pages. Especially the way the last chapter ended when the lights go out. Oh, it's classic. Well, let's continue, shall we? Such a heavy thing to admit. Why do all of these thrillers gotta be so stressful?
That's clever. Yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent. Wow, thought time. Yeah. Thought time? I'm so excited. Okay, folks, as you all know, <laughs> you know. The Hazelwood. The first book that I completed in this challenge was The Hazelwood by oh Melissa Fetching Albert. <laughs> <laughs> How to describe this book? It's a, it's a horror for <laughs> young adults. I don't know why it's considered freaking what it is. Okay. Yeah. Because this is too mature. It feels so grim. Yes. <laughs> this is on the, uh, this is like, oh, you want to get into grim dark? Here you go. Yeah. It's, what, it's very. <laughs> I mean, I because know. this is bloody, this is violent, it's gruesome, mm -hmm. it's dark as crap. There's no hope. <laughs> there's no happiness. It and, is a bit cheery, isn't it? But yeah, at the same time, it's so gosh darn entertaining. It is. I'm not going to go into anything else. Yeah, you really can't. I'm not going to do anything else. It gets really, really weird. It becomes kind of a, a fever dream. Yes. And an acid trip. Yes. Together. Mm-hmm. I appreciated Melissa Albert's prose. I, I don't think I've read a YA book with this kind of prose before. The storytelling was great because it's fast paced. I'm going to give it 3.5. Really? Right, I don't know what would make it more for me, but nothing would yeah. make it less. I love that. The next book was The <gasps> Gutter Prayer by Gareth Hanrahan. <laughs> Misha Hanrahan. Okay. I love the cover. What to even say about this book it was so fantasy. Parts of it were really hard to understand. Really? Within the yeah. first hundred pages, I'm, I was thinking, did Steven Erickson, who wrote Malazan Book of the Fallen, write these books? Oh my gosh. Like, really? Like, okay, so his prose isn't quite on the level of Steven Erickson. No yeah. one's prose is quite on the level of Steven Erickson. I'm sorry I didn't get a big, there's no big ending montage. I wanted to grab it for you guys. Time slipped away, and I actually finished this book while I was working. I will say, for the most part of this book, I was like, what is going on? Oh, that's not good. What is going on? Not necessarily in a bad way, okay. but also not in a good way. Like you felt it was gonna get explained? Yes, I will say the main plot of this book was really good because you follow several different point of views. One guy, he's like a thief hunter. And then uh, the main character, she's honestly quite sweet. She She's a thief that you meet right at the beginning. Somehow she starts receiving these visions of things that are happening in real time throughout this city. They become more and more frequent to where the lines are blurred for her to where she can't tell if she's living the life through other people or she's actually like living her own life. It's really, really, really crazy. And then she connects the dots. Anytime the bells of Gurdon ring, she, like, she has a vision. And then you realize what the connection is between the bells and that's when it's like, okay, this is starting to make a lot of sense. Oh, that's cool. And then there's a third character. His name is Spar. He's the son of a dead thief or a guy who started this like, secret society of, of thieves and he has come down with a condition that's plaguing this entire world where people start turning to stone. Oh, that's why he looks like that. Yeah, that's why he looks like that. He looks like a big blob of stone. He's pretty much becoming a statue. And so okay. he's trying to save himself and save his friends. It is so much. I will say Gareth Hanrahan had two of the best reveals I've read in a very long time. Really? And they were back to back. There's so many surprises and twists and turns in this book. Overall rating for the gutter prayer. I'm thinking a 3.25. Okay. It was good. And if what I recommend it, I would recommend it to people who are heavy into fantasy. If you're trying to get into fantasy, this is not the book for you. It would not be a book for me. It probably wouldn't. I think, <laughs> I think, 
I think you'd read the first 50 pages and go, I can't. Exactly. And that <laughs> almost was me. If that was you then. Third and final book. Yes. <laughs> Wait. Oh, yes! <gasps> Stop! We have so excited. House Across the Lake by <laughs> Riley Sega. Oh my gosh. What do you think, Tony? So this was the best book of the, of the swap. And I think you knew it would be. Yeah. I think I knew it was gonna be too. What to say? <laughs> Our main character, Casey, she is at the lake house that she has been going to her entire life. Her family's owned it for generations. And on this little lake, Lake Green, there's like five houses. It's a very, very small community. She's there because some stuff has happened in her life that she needs to get away from the public eye. She's kind of a celebrity. She's fighting some addiction problems. There's been a scandal that happened that she just needs to kind of get away from. And so she's spending some time at her family's yes. lake house. Well, she strikes up an, a friendship with a woman that she saves from drowning. And then she somehow starts- She starts doing something. She starts freaking peeping tomming. Out of pocket. Yeah. She's like so out of pocket and she knows it's wrong. That she sees things that she's not supposed to see. I'm like, I don't know if it's cause you're a neighbor. <laughs> I get that she's got addiction problems, but it's like, why are you constantly drunk? <laughs> and especially she was always drunk at like crucial moments. Oh, it was like when the girl in horror movies goes to see what the noise is. She's like, oh, the pitch dark basement. I know I'm the only one here, yeah. but I heard a crashing sound. Yeah. Or, oh, I heard a noise in the woods at 1 a.m. Let me go in there. Only with Casey, she's drunk off her butt. The twists and the turns. Riley Sager did such a good job of making you believe that it was one person, <laughs> and then that it was a different person from that person, and then that it was a different person from those two. He just kept you guessing until the big reveal came. If you're a fan of this, you're gonna be a fan of Hidden Pictures. <gasps> this is a thriller for thriller fans. This is, okay, I felt like it took that step past thrillers and into horror. Yeah, it- I it, really did. It merges the two. And when you merge thriller and horror, it becomes the most intense thing. As soon as the horror stuff started happening, I thought, there's no way this is the <laughs> turn it's taken. I know, same. I was like, I don't know if I love or hate this. Yes. What's your rating? My rating. I'm nervous. I. 4.25. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 4.25. This was excellent. I'm a thriller fan okay. now, and this was just a nice okay. collection to that to that list of books that I can say that I read. Do you want to read Only One Left together? Would you guys want to see us read that book together? Yes or no in the comments. Yes, I would. It was a good swap. Let us know down in the comments what you thought about these books. If you've read them, I would love to hear your thoughts. And please, please, please go see Ashlyn's video of the books that I give her. I gave her some very intense, very challenging. Yes. Ones. So please go check out her video, like it, subscribe, especially if you like and subscribe to this video. Thank you so much for being here. I know it's always like two or more weeks in between uploads, but it's because we, we do big things now. Mm -hmm. And also work is always constantly getting in my way. But I love you guys so much. You guys have, you've changed my life and you've changed our life. Yes. And I can't thank you enough. This has been such a, uh, a pleasure and it's been so fun and I'll catch you all in the next one. See you later.